This is part three of the Real News interview with Ali Ornek. Uh, Ali is a Turkish journalist of Kurdish origin. He previously worked for the leading Turkish newspaper, Hurriyet Daily, where he was a foreign e a news editor. Um, and he's also spent years reporting on the war in Syria. Um, he is a, a close analyst of the war there. Uh, in the first two parts of this uh, interview, we discussed the Turkish invasion of northern Syria. We also discussed the very complex U.S. relationship with the Kurdish forces, the People's Protection Units, the YPG. Um, and we also discussed the history of Syria's relationship with the PKK, uh, the Kurdistan Workers Party. In this final part, we'll be discussing more of uh, these details and the history behind uh, U.S., Syrian, and Kurdish relations. We'll be discussing what is called the Kurdish question, if you will, um, and, and at the end, Ali will provide some insight as to what he thinks the future of the war in Syria could look like. Maybe we can talk a little bit about the history of the PKK. Um, we know that actually Syria was one of the strongest supporters of the PKK historically. This is the Kurdistan Workers' Party. Um, and that, that support has gone you know, off and on over time, but in the 1990s, there was even discussions of a so-called undeclared war between Syria and Turkey over Syria's support for the PKK. Um, however, no. so we know that that goes back. However, we also know that Kurds have been um, oppressed, not just in Turkey, but also in Syria. Um, you know, there was, it was an Arab nationalist government, and uh, the Kurdish language was not officially used, and Kurds were not citizens until 2011. Um, in April of 2011, Bashar al-Assad um, allowed Kurds in the north to get citizenship in response to some of the protests as, as a reform. Um, so uh, how, how do you explain, you know, clearly uh, the U.S. has betrayed the Kurds numerous times historically, um, not just in, in Syria but also in Iraq. Um, so clearly the U.S. is an absolutely unreliable ally in, in these regards. Um, but Syria also has a history of oppressing some of these you know, Kurdish forces while also supporting the PKK against Turkey. How do you explain that contradiction? Yeah, actually, uh, after the uh, after the uh, war in Syria, uh, the Kurdish question in uh, Syria was uh, actually some sort of... Uh, we are not, now we are listening to a corrupt version of the history of Kurds in Syria. Actually, the uh, 2.5 uh, million Kurds are living in Syria, and just uh, 300,000 of uh, this population uh, without uh, were without identity, uh, without Syrian passport or citizenship, uh, because it's a very um, complex issue, not uh, simple simply uh, about uh, or Assad crackdown on Kurds. Uh, this goes back to uh, 1920. 20s when the Turkey in Turkey there were some tribal uprising Kurdish tribal uprisings and when Turkish armed forces cracked down these uprisings uh, Kurds uh, took refuge in C northern Syria for instance Aleppo has a very famous neighborhood called Sheikh Said it's a tribal leader in uh, Turkey it's a Kurdish tribal leader and uh, actually Sheikh Said neighborhood of Aleppo was uh, founded by uh, those uh, followers of uh, Sheikh Said who took refuge after the crackdown. Also, in Afrin, there are people from uh, Dersim, uh, Turkish eastern city of Dersim, and this is showing uh, a refugee flow. And Syria claimed that uh, actually these guys, without these Kurdish people, without the uh, identity or citizenship, are actually people that took refuge. The into Syria after the Turkey cracked down the tribal uprisings. So uh, it's it's not, it's not yeah uh, giving the whole picture, but uh, PKK also uh, was supporting this idea. You know, uh, in 1980s uh, they have a fa very famous uh, journal called Sahrebun. In Sahrebun, they uh, most evaluated the problem of Kurds in Syria, and they said PKK said. Uh, this is a, some sort of refugee problem, not a Kurdish question itself in the Syria. And they said, uh, and we saw very interesting articles. For instance, uh, in 1980s, there's a uh, there was a very famous uh, 
Syrian uprising uh, triggered by Muslim Brotherhood. And uh, PKK said this in is Hama. a... Yeah, in Hama. And said, PK, what PKK evaluated is very interesting. They said this is a US conspiracy uh, by using uh, Ikhwan, uh, Muslim Brotherhood, as a proxy force uh, to weaken uh, anti-imperialist and progressive leadership of Hafiz al-Assad. After uh, Hafiz al-Assad died, PKK published eulogies. And another interesting point of when we are talking about Afrin, uh, PKK has uh, had two MPs. Uh, two MPs are actually PKK linked and they, they were par part of Syrian parliament uh, because Syrian government al always uh, considered uh, PKK as a lesser evil or some sort of good guys uh, when comparing it with Barzani, which is very close to Israel. Mm -hmm. So they think PKK is a precaution to a barrier uh, to Barzani uh, linked movement in, in northern Syria. And they cracked down, uh, mostly the uh, Syrian government always cracked down uh, Barzani linked politicians, arrested them, put them in jails, but never uh, same thing happened to uh, PKK linked uh, politicians. Uh, this changed right after United States invaded uh, Iraq in 2003, uh, when uh, PKK con uh, think that uh, it's now time for United States to reshape the Middle East, so they uh, act accordingly. Uh, but before the uh, U.S. invasion of uh, Iraq, we saw a very uh, uh, we saw an alliance. Actually, this is a de facto alliance between PKK and Syrian government. Uh, it, as I said, this is not just uh, because uh, PKK, uh, Syrian government wanted to to took revenge from Turkey, uh, take revenge from Turkey because Turkey backed uh, Hama uprising of Muslim Brotherhood, and they said, uh, in mostly uh, Western experts said, uh, Tur uh, that's why also Syrian government supported PKK to, to take its revenge, but not, uh, not this is not the whole re the whole reason. The other reason is. They always wanted to prevent Israeli linked Barzani uh, movement in northern Syria. So uh, this is actually a little bit uh, corrupted version of uh, Kurdish question in northern Syria. Uh, perhaps you may remember uh, when FSA first entered into Aleppo, there were reports that they were uh, largely arresting Kurdish people, civilians, uh, because uh, they think they were then they were thinking that. Kurds were Assad agents. Uh, they are just arresting because Afrin people, uh, there are some sociological differences uh, between Kurdish communities in uh, northern Syria. Afrin Kurds are always part of Syria's uh, economy. Uh, Aleppo was a big, uh, has always been a big uh, industrial city. Uh, and Afrin people bought, uh, fe bought feeding the Aleppo. Uh, by the, with their agricultural products, and also they are, uh, they went Afrin and uh, worked there. On the contrary, the Kurds uh, of Hasaka, uh, where, which is close to Iraqi border, uh, are just producing. It's a, some sort of colony-like uh, economy, and uh, they produce cotton and uh, they produce wheat for to feed the industry of Aleppo. Uh, so uh, Kurds in Afrin. Uh, are always uh, par uh, have much more uh, Kurdish ident uh, Syrian identity than uh, their fellow Kurds in East, uh, and this is I think uh, uh, this is another reason of why they they call called uh, Syrian army to protect Afrin, uh, while in the eastern uh, cities uh, uh, YPG officials were saying like. Uh, Syrian army never uh, can never turn back to the territory that we liberated. It's, it's also true that in the 1980s, when there was a military coup in Turkey, that many Kurdish activists and militants fled to northern Syria for refuge. Uh, can you talk more about the relationship between Syria and many Kurdish activists? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, my uncle, uh, who was a Kurdish activist, uh, before uh, not, in, in, before the coup in Turkey, uh, took refuge in Syria uh, after the coup, and he, he told me his uh, experience in Damascus, uh, 
uh, as a Kurd from Turkey. He said uh, he was shocked to see Kurdish theaters, uh, some Kurdish plays in capital Damascus. While uh, we know that during that time in Turkey, speaking Kurdish was prohibited by government and uh, very dangerous. It was a very dangerous thing to do. Uh, the other thing he said, uh, he went, he, whenever he went to uh, a public uh, building, official building, he saw Kurdish civilians, uh, citizens of Syria, speaking in Kurdish with the Kurdish public employees. So he said, uh, what basically Kurd Syria has a Kurdish question. That's true, but it's not at the scale of uh, the oppression in Turkey. Uh, now, uh, I think uh, some fairy tales actually created about the past of Syria uh, due to uh, while YPG is trying to uh, legitimize its uh, controlling a territory and uh, this sort some sort of uh, uh, yeah you know uh, some sort of stories about Kurdish oppression are uh, very exaggerated uh, to demonize I think Syrian government and Syrian people but actually this is not completely true. Uh, as I said, there's a Kurdish question in Syria. Uh, we can discuss the reason for many, many hours. It's a very long uh, topic, but it's not the same. It was not. It has never been same in the op uh, the oppression in Turkey. Uh, as a Kurd myself, uh, I saw some quite uh, d difficult things in Turkey as a Kurd, uh, state persecution, etc., etc. But things were different in Syria, and as I as I said. Many of the Kurds, uh, some of the Kurds have the citizenship, while some of the very few of the Kurds, uh, which are claimed to uh, be refugee actually, uh, without the citizenship. But there is, okay, Syrian government never uh, accepted Kurdish as an official language, but it never uh, prohibits it or tried to ban it uh, from publicly using. Hmm. That, well, that's a very interesting distinction. Thanks for outlining that, the difference between the oppression of Kurds in Turkey, which is extremely violent. And, you yeah. know, we've seen many thousands of Kurdish civilians killed. Um, in fact, uh, what got very little attention is that the Turkish military waged a brutal war um, just in the past few years against Kurdish communities in the south while the war in Syria was ongoing. Of course, Western corporate media outlets focusing on the war in Syria largely ignored the fact that numerous Kurdish communities in southern Turkey were razed to the ground. Um, so yeah, clearly, clearly uh, while well, well, Kurds may have been repressed historically in Syria, there is not um, anything that is on the same level as the extreme violent repression inside Turkey. Definitely. This is completely true. You mentioned that the U.S. certainly has a history not only of betraying the PKK, um, but also of not actually wanting to ally with it, even though you said this is kind of a unidirectional um, tendency. Um, so how do you see this panning out? Um, if the PKK is interested in allying with the U.S. over, as a higher priority, the creation of a, an autonomous region, um, and the U.S has shown no interest in standing, you know, by its side of the bargain and, and actually defending the interests of Kurds in Syria or anywhere else. Um, of course, it, we can't forget that while Saddam Hussein was committing genocide against Kurds in Iraq, which are different yeah. politically and speak different language and, and different culturally, but when he was carrying out a genocide in Iraq, the U.S. was supporting Saddam Hussein. Um, so we, we see throughout history, of course, the United States has, has no uh, problem moving in and out of alliances with, you know, these dictatorial forces, with reactionary forces. Um, so how do you see this panning out in Syria? Uh, what, what, what do you think will happen? And what do you think would be a preferable outcome for the YPG and other forces in the region? Now, uh, YPG relies on the U.S. Uh, need for a proxy force uh, and also capturing Syria's territory to choke uh, Syria economically. So they think, uh, YPG leadership think that uh, in long term, United States uh, could never uh, dare to leave them alone. Uh, one of the latest news about uh, a P uh, YPG delegation uh, visiting the cities or capitals of Europe, uh, one of the leaders uh, said that um, 
Yan in Afrin, uh, they US didn't uh, offer them a protection, but the things not uh, will not be same for the east of Euphrates Euro, uh, River, and said while uh, Trump administration is focusing on Iran, uh, he sure he will uh, need Kurds uh, because you know uh, one of the other branch of PKK is in Iran. It's called Pijak, and they think that. Uh, this is this is going to be a, a regional alliance instead of uh, just uh, limiting it uh, into Syria. Uh, I think basically, uh, yeah, this uh, this reading is true, but they ignore uh, the capacity of Turkey. Turkey is a very powerful uh, country when it comes to military force, and it's a very critical country for United States. Uh, Turkey, but thanks to United, uh, Turkey, uh, Turkish membership. Uh, in NATO, uh, now NATO has an arm in uh, Black Sea and also in Caucasia, and they can carry out plans for Iran, and they can protect Israel by uh, setting up huge uh, radar bases in Turkey, uh, and Turkish military uh, took responsibility of training of uh, some African forces. Uh, Turkey is a very big country when it comes uh, when it comes to uh, not uh, for. Uh, for the NATO alliance, but uh, the co problem is uh, why PG couldn't offer uh, this capacity to uh, United States. So, if uh, United States couldn't uh, fail to achieve um, convincing Erdogan, and uh, when they think that uh, the relations will be uh, very very badly damaged. Uh, I think they can prefer Turkey over YPG. But the thing is, now uh, United States uh, government thinks that they can uh, have some middle way between uh, with the Erdogan uh, by offering some sort of joint control sh uh, control mechanism in Mambish or uh, in the eastern some part of the eastern uh, Euphrates River, like the towns in the town of Talabiat. Uh, Honestly, I think the thing uh, it's not going well for YPG uh, because uh, by relying on so much uh, foreign power at the, at the end of the day, whether US has 2,000 troops or military very uh, superior to other countries, uh, it has its own limits in uh, northern Syria. And by relying on so much this uh, foreign force, uh, by rejecting uh, any uh, any kind of agreement with Damascus government, uh, they risk uh, their achievements uh, that they gained so far with the uh, on, on a, uh, with the uh, battle of battle against ISIS. So, uh, I I think uh, northern Syria is very complicated and very unpredictable for uh, m many reasons because Syrian government is also still very powerful actor in northern Syria. Uh, they have uh, very good relations with Arab uh, tribes there, and also s even some uh, Kurdish uh, politicians. Uh, they have very good relations. And the thing is, the Rojava, uh, the region under YP YPG control, is still economically very dependent to Damascus. Okay, they have rich oil fields. Okay, that's true. They have rich uh, cotton farms. They have rich uh, wheat farms, uh, they have some sort, uh, some gas fields too, but all uh, means something when uh, you think them with the uh, serious industry in the West, in homes and in Damascus. When you have uh, Turkey on the north, Syrian government uh, in the south, yeah, that, what I'm trying to say, when you have a isolated geography, you need to find a, an ally to yourself, but currently, and unfortunately, YPG uh, leadership uh, ignored this uh, basic geographic reality. Mm, and this means the uh, US plan, as I said, is to choke Syria economically, but it also means choke Roj uh, Rojava economically too. Uh, because when you isolate uh, Rojava from the Syrian government, who can, uh, uh, who can turn the... Uh, who can run the economy of Rojava? It's a uh, it's very dependent economy, as I said. So in the future, I'm I have no hopes uh, for the region actually, and unfortunately, because uh, after the Afrin, uh, 
uh, YPG never question its uh, relations with uh, United States. Well, Ali, thank you so much for joining us on The Real News. It was a very insightful interview. I know I learned a lot. Uh, and we definitely look forward to interviewing you in the future and getting more of your insight. Thank you, Ben. For The Real News, I'm Ben Norton.